Hey guys, this is Lamont and Tony over here at Big Dolls Performance. And we have a little interesting project here. Now, we have this nice red Fox Body convertible Mustang. Um, got a customer. This customer purchased um, our polished Stage 2 Cobra GT40 manifold. Purchased our polished ported 75 millimeter throttle body right there. Purchased our stage two ported flow tech cylinder heads. Okay. Purchased our stage two camshaft. Purchased a set of our ported stainless steel headers. And um, this Mustang is, is, is beautiful. Beautiful Mustang, you know, a nice red, you know, convertible. It's, it's, it's a real nice, real nice vehicle, you know, nice polished pony rims and the wide ones. Um, so the customer had his mechanic um, install all of our parts onto this, this vehicle. And, you know, of course, we gave the customer recommendations for the supporting parts. You know, he has the 30 pound hour injectors <clears throat> to support the power. He has the matching mass airflow sensor with the high flow air filter. He has the Anderson pipe, you know, the power pipe um, to match the flow. And he degreed the cam per our specs. It's an AOD car. Um, he went with what we recommended, um, the Bauman you know, shift kit and the high rev kit for the AOD and the big transmission cooler, you know? And um, he also has a stall converter, I believe. What did he say? He has a 3000 stall, right? <clears throat> we, we recommend with these AOD cars, um, the high rev kit set at maximum shift points, which is usually around 58 to 6,000 RPM when you leave it in auto. And um, the shift kit that allows you to shift the transmission first, second, and third without doing the ALD shuffle. And we recommend um, usually a lockup style converter. Um, from 3,000 to 3,500 stall on these on these AODs. A lot of guys are scared of stall speed because they think it's going to affect the drivability. And I'm telling you guys from experience, a lot of experience. You know, I've owned AOD cars, 32 to 3,500 lockup with the necessary modifications that I mentioned earlier. The car will drive like factory. But yet and still, when you get on it, it will pull like you have a stroke motor in it if you have a 302. Um, if you up the size of the motor or you start getting over um, the, you know, 380 to 400 horsepower range, you want to go with a 300M uh, input shaft. You know, um, when you start getting into the 500 horsepower uh, rubber or horsepower range, then you want to start going with the one piece solid um, um, input shaft and a non lockup converter with the necessary level three rebuilding kit. Okay. Um, as long as they're set right with a nice oil cooler, um, these AOD transmissions surprisingly can handle quite a bit of power. But going back to this bill. So <clears throat> the customer had a set of our ported stainless steel headers. And just like any other aftermarket part for these vehicles and other vehicles, you know, they may not fit perfectly. You know, you may have to do a little trimming, modifications, depending on the vehicles. A lot of times when we're installing these, you know, headers and other parts, to these type of vehicles, you have <clears throat> things that affect the fitment of 
the various parts that you are installing. For instance, you can lose a half an inch of clearance if you have weak or worn um, engine mounts. Okay, if your engine mounts are the regular you know, stock rubber and they have miles on them, they'll actually um, sit a little lower, you know, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. Well, that will affect your header and exhaust clearance. Um, if they're broken, you know, that will affect your header and exhaust clearance. Um, if they shift it a little bit forward, a little bit backwards, that will affect your clearance. If the vehicle has been in an accident and the body is twisted a little bit, that would affect clearances. <clears throat> So we have a lot of customers that ran these headers with no problem. Then we have some customers that have to do some, you know, trimming the modifications. Um, we've had customers do that with other headers as well. So just to let you guys know that, you know, aftermarket and custom parts may not necessarily fit perfectly without modification. But, you know, with a little bit of modification, um, they fit just fine. You know, you, you guys you know, put on oversized tires and you may have to do a little massage into the wheel wheel. That doesn't mean that the tires don't work. It just means you have to make it fit. You have to make it work. So <clears throat> the mechanic refused to install our headers. So the customer wanted, you know, his car up and going. So the mechanic opted to buy a set of Flowtech headers. So the customer, you know, brought the car to us. So we can go over all the work and we can dial it in and get it tuned up um, to make maximum power, get the air fuel ratio right, and get the drivability up to par. The customer also wanted us to port the headers, the flow techs, once he told us that the, his mechanic refused to install you know, the headers that he got from us, <clears throat> which was no problem. So we decided to go ahead and do that. So Lamont, you know, started taking the headers off. So as soon as the customer told me that they were flow techs, you know, we instantly knew that they flow like crap. Okay. Um, the big tube shorties. And it goes back to what we were talking about before in previous videos where things may look like they flow well and you may assume that they flow well but when you actually test them in a controlled you know situation you'll find out the truth and once the customer told me kind of headers you know the mechanic suggested to put on i told the customer i said listen those headers are going to hurt your horsepower and we've tested those headers before, we've ported those headers before, so we know this firsthand. So, Lamont got the headers off. I think he got what, one of the headers off, Lamont? Yeah, passenger side. Passenger side header off. So I, I grabbed the header, got it set up on the flow bench, just so we can see what it does. So we're getting ready to head on over to the flow bench. And um, we're going to see We have the header right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a Flowtech header. Um, the header looks, big tube header, it looks like it can flow. We haven't flowed this one yet, so we're gonna see what it flow. Same time you guys see what it flow. Okay, by the looks of this header and by the dimensions that, you know, I measured, I, I have an assumption on what this header is going to flow. Plus, we have experience with these headers. So we're just doing this so, you know, the customer can see what he bolt on, bolted on per his recommendation from his mechanic. Now, mind you, our stainless steel ported, you know, um, inch and five eighth inner diameter headers flow 
um, a little over 700 CFM per side. Okay, after we pour them. So let's see what this one does. We're gonna go, go ahead, pause it, and set the flow bench up. Flow bench set up, I'm gonna show you guys. It's open in the back. And we're gonna cut the flow bench on and see what these flow techs Four hundred and nineteen, four hundred and twenty, twenty one, twenty CFM. Four hundred and twenty CFM. From this big tube header. We're going to get some measuring. Equipment. To see. What size tubes that we're working with? You see that? Zeroed out. So let's see what we have here. So pretty much these are an inch and three quarters. An inch and three quarters <laughs> shorty's header. Shorty headers. Flowing 420 CFM. 420 CFM. That's it. Now our ported stainless steel inch and five eighth headers flow a little bit over 700 CFM each. And this is what we've been trying to tell you guys. Now these headers were recommended by his mechanic. His mechanic called the ported stainless steel headers junk trash garbage. Because he didn't want to do the extra work to get him to go on. So this is what he recommended to his customer. Something that's actually going to take away and restrict a lot of the performance that the customer, our customer, paid for with the ported parts. So with the ported intake manifold, pretty intake manifold, with the ported flow textile in the heads, with the ported 75 millimeter throttle body, with our stage two cam, all of that stuff is proven on a 302 combo to make well over 370, 380 horsepower to the rear wheels on a T5 car and a dyno jet. And then he goes and put some restrictive flow tech headers on there. Now granted, his mechanic probably didn't know what these headers flow, what the flow tech headers flow. But this is why we plead with you guys to trust our recommendations. We know what we're talking about. We port, test, and modify thousands of these parts. We're doing this on a daily basis. That flow machine is working every day. That's why it's, it's, it's dirty and, and, and has a lot of stuff on it because we're using it every single day. And we know what these parts can do. And we're not trying to bash other companies and things like that. That's not our intent. Our intent is to try to educate you guys so you can make the right decision, so you can make the power that you want to make without wasting money and wasting time. So now he paid his mechanic to put those headers on and we had to take them back off just so we can pour them.
And we try to avoid all this. But we're going to go ahead, pour them up. We already know what they're going to flow afterwards. It's going to be somewhere in the 650 range, 660 range. It's going to allow him to have the power that our ported parts can produce. We're going to set it, tune it, and he's going to have fun. We're going to have a couple of videos demonstrating what this car is capable of doing. See you guys at the track.